Why kids don't go outside anymore? Short answer? Shut up! Short answer? Guns. Children and teenagers these days aren't going outside as much as before. 50 years ago, nearly half of all kids in America walked or biked to school. Today, it's less than 13%. This is largely due to the lack of independence children have. Parents are more worried than ever about letting their kids go out on their own, because look at all these kidnappers outside. Look at them. I'm not worried about kidnappers, actually. I'm more worried about my son getting shot by a stray bullet. However, stranger kidnappings are astonishingly rare, and these cases are always sensationalized in the media. The real threat to the safety of children are cars. Vehicle collisions are the number one cause of death among children and teenagers, killing thousands and injuring tens of thousands True. every year. When you look at how our cities are designed, none of this is surprising. Modern suburbs, and especially American suburbs, are car dependent. Dude, I saw a Bill Nye video. Uh, it was like an old video from Bill and I, but it was like an Instagram video. And it was actually so funny because it's he was spitting facts. He was talking about how he was like showing traffic. And he's like, every single one of these vehicles, every single one of these cars has one person in it. And he was like talking about the size of the car and stuff like that. And talking about how much space like one person doesn't need to be in like this huge vehicle to go around and talking about how ridiculous it is that that's our uh that that's what we do that's like a normal thing that we do and how we build these like you know six lane uh f freeways and highways and shit like just to fit those people instead of just pushing more money into public transportation which is way better and way more environmentally em environmentally friendly and, uh, you know, makes it where there's less traffic, list yeah. goes on. Neighborhoods are endless mazes of single-family homes with streets laid out in winding cul-de-sacs. Businesses sit behind giant parking lots with wide multi-lane strodes full of high-speed car traffic. This forces you to cross these big intersections designed for the flow of vehicles rather than the safety of people. This creates a vicious cycle where the dangerous streets make parents drive their kids more, but by doing so, they're adding more cars to the problem. Recently, the channel... You know, I find a solution to this by living in a small town. Oh, the Urbanity made a video about Miami, and they caught this footage of a school bus having to stop in an angle and block traffic just so kids can safely get off. That's smart. Because drivers literally would not stop. So when everything's too far away and crossing the street is too dangerous, children have zero independent mobility until they turn 16 and get a driver's license. Most of the world sets their legal driving age to 18 and for good reason. Teenage drivers are four times more likely to crash than- Yeah, they are. I don't understand. Like 16 is way too young to have a license. I'm just going to say it. Like it is way too young to have a license. Adults mainly due to immaturity and inexperience. But in most of North America, teenagers as young as 16 can drive unsupervised. Actually, yeah, you can literally drive at 15 with a permit. So it's kind of And in some places, it's as young as 14. If we had viable alternatives to driving, our legal driving age wouldn't have to be so low, and teenagers wouldn't have to risk their lives just so they can have some independence. Until then, children have to rely on mommy and daddy to chauffeur them everywhere. This is where the soccer mom stereotype comes from, someone who spends all their time driving their kids to and from different activities. In car-dependent suburbia, Man. dropping off or picking- I mean, that's a bit of a reach to say that's where it came from. Picking up kids from school becomes this massive ordeal, with cars backing up for miles of traffic. The that is actually how, uh... It is dropping off as to school. There's a line that wraps around the entire street. These schools may be far away and are sometimes- That's why I'm going to buy a bike and I'm going to ride my bike to school with Ezra. But I need to have money for a bike. I don't want to get like a shitty Walmart bike. You get, you know what I mean? Because I feel like if you get like one of those shitty Walmart bikes, it's going to break in like a month. I want to at least get like a, a mid, middle of the pack bike. You know what I mean? Big, when does the violence start in this video? Well- I'm sorry, this might be a video where violence might not be a prevalent thing. I'm sorry. I'm in rural locations, but this is primarily due to sprawling car-centric design. Due to the low density of the suburbs, 
schools have to consolidate into fewer but larger facilities that are farther away, rather than having more smaller schools that are closer. Regardless, schools being in the rural places does not justify the lack of infrastructure. This beautiful video by Bicycle Dutch shows how majority of all children in the Netherlands bike themselves to school, even if it's miles away in a rural area. They Dude, one thing that is super nice about my area is we actually have this huge bike trail uh, that like spans, God, I think it's like over a hundred miles or some, it's something crazy, maybe not a hundred, but it spans a long fucking way, like through multiple cities and stuff like that. And our sidewalks are really wide. They can do this because nice. they've built safe cycling infrastructure throughout all their cities and the entire country. Wait, I'm going to check something real quick. Something, uh, something doesn't add up here. Something doesn't add up here. We might not build bike lanes across the whole country like the Dutch, but even if a Dude, I can't wait for people to fucking lose their minds in the comments. Why? Uh, uh, my guns! My guns! Uh! Action of these kids were able to walk or bike to school. It would make a huge difference for Just both parents and the, the development comments. of children. A 2002 psychology study asked elementary school students to draw a map of their path to school and. The results were just sad. The child who walked to school on their own produced this accurate detail drawing with various landmarks along the way. The child who walked with an adult got the orientation wrong but still roughly identified the right directions. But this is the drawing from the child who was driven to school. Studies in Switzerland from the 90s found that children who freely played in their neighborhood on their own spent- Don't you know more guns are safe? Also, I want to clarify this before anyone uh, says anything. Uh, yes, I realize that taking guns away doesn't make, uh, like, criminals are obviously still going to find guns and shit like that, but, uh, th did you guys know? Th you know, never mind. I'm not... Uh, 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 spend twice as much time outside, were way more active, more gun, had more, more than safe, twice true. as many friends, and had better motor and social skills compared to kids who played in a park under parental supervision. Pig, Without finish. independent mobility, children don't get as much exercise, contributing to the major child obesity crisis in the U.S. Yeah, criminals could technically, uh, you know, find illegal guns, but uh, I don't know if you guys know this, but if there's like, uh, you know, a lot of people who aren't criminals uh, commit crimes with guns, but... Uh, <laughs> it also prevents them from, you know, Going out and socializing. So I, Studies sorry, show that it. children with less independence focus. are lonelier as they have a weaker sense of community, lower sense of safety, and have fewer activities with friends. The emptiness of car-dependent suburbia also makes it feel more dangerous. In Jane Jacobs' book, The Death and Life of Great American Cities, she explains the concept known as eyes on the street. It basically means that vibrant and lively streets feel safer as there are more people around and thus more eyes to deter bad behavior. This is why dark alleyways or streets at nighttime feel dangerous. True. But without people regularly walking by or casual onlookers watching the street, suburbia feels lonely and creepy. If a child were to be kidnapped outside, no one would notice. Over the past few decades, this sense of danger has changed our cultural attitudes towards children being out on their own to the point where it can literally land you in jail. Like Nicole Ganey, who was arrested and charged with child neglect for letting her son walk to the park alone. Or Deborah Harrell, who spent 17 days in prison and temporarily lost custody of her child, all for letting her daughter play in the park alone while she was working at a nearby McDonald's. An even more ridiculous case was Jackie. I mean... I wouldn't say get arrested. Maybe get a slap, I don't know. I feel like... You need parental supervision to an extent, like seven-year-old and nine-year-old. They shouldn't get arrested, definitely. But like, I mean, they, yeah, getting your kid taken away, that is bonkers. The state has taken custody. That is actually, dude, I don't get it. I could call CPS on alcoholic parents who drive their kids around drunk, don't feed their kids, treat them like shit, uh, their house is disgusting, uh, they literally live in filth. Uh, there's a 10-year-old who still shits his pants because their parents has not taken care of him, and they don't do anything. But the state takes a child for just letting a 9-year-old play alone at a park? 
Kids play in the park all the time by themselves. I'm not saying that. I'm saying there needs to be like, I personally believe there needs to be at least one adult there. That's my personal opinion. I, I do honestly think that. Because what is a park? A place for children. What do pedophiles like doing? Going to places where children are. What do kidnappers like doing? Going to places where children like to congregate and be together. You know what I'm saying? There needs to be some sort of, like, supervision to an extent. An even more ridiculous case was Jackie Kendrick, who got reported to child services for letting her two kids play in her own backyard while she watched them inside. Some schools in the US even have rules not allowing anyone to walk at all. So even if what? you are with your child, you might end up like Jim Howie from Tennessee, who got arrested for picking his kids up from school on foot instead of driving a car. Even if- What the f- Is that real? There's no way! What the fuck? A child could walk or bike around on their own, car-dependent suburbia is bland. There's almost nothing to do and nowhere to go apart from a park or the shopping mall. Additionally, our public spaces are actively designed specifically to keep kids away. An example of this are those metal studs that are placed on benches or railings to prevent skateboarding. Many malls- Yeah, those are lame, dude. Malls, amusement parks, and even shit filet are flat-out banning teenagers from entering without parental supervision. When the streets are too course, dangerous and there aren't any places to hang out in, is it a surprise that kids these days want to stay at home all day, playing video games, and watching Skibbity Toilet? Actually, chat, every time my, my son comes home, you want to know what he does? Goes outside and rides his bike around the neighborhood. Doesn't get on a screen. You guys should do that, all right? I mean, to be fair, I'm kind of, I'm a little bit spoiled because we kind of live in, like, a uh, really nice neighborhood. It's not like super nice, but it's it's a nice neighborhood. And plus, all my neighbors are like always outside doing yard work or or like there's other people walking their dogs or, you know, it's always people outside. And I know and I know like people around the area. So it's it's it feels nice to be able to let them do that. You know what I mean? But social media, apps some people don't get that opportunity because some people just live in areas you just can't trust like TikTok basically serve as online public spaces where people can share their voices in an open environment. However, this is just as problematic as Elon Musk saying that Twitter will be the digital town square. With the recent motions to ban TikTok yeah. in the US, there's a yes! critic- Yes! We should do that! I saw that recently! We should! I would love that! Ban TikTok! Please. ...lack of true public spaces that Shut are accessible up, to young people. Oh Car dependency in North America is not an inevitable thing. Suburbia doesn't have to be built this way. It's possible to make our streets safer and encourage more outdoor activity by changing our infrastructure. This means narrowing streets, installing protected bike lanes, and adding traffic homing measures to slow down cars and prevent collisions. True. We also need to change our zoning laws to allow higher density houses and small businesses to be built in the suburbs so that people can live closer to amenities. These changes don't only benefit children. When a city is safe and comfortable enough for kids, then it's safe and comfortable for everyone. If you wouldn't let your child ride in this bike lane by themselves, then no one will, because it's not designed properly. Period. No. This is why in the few remaining walkable neighborhoods that do exist in North America, you will see lots of children walking to and from school all by themselves. This is also very common in East Asian cities, which they've achieved by having good public transit and dense urban development that creates eyes. Yeah, isn't like public transportation in uh, Asian countries like really fucking good compared to America? Evolve America into a different country. I don't know why, like, you know what? I Actually, I do know why, but I'll say it anyway. Uh, America doesn't want to evolve. They don't want to get better. They're too focused on tradition. And I was about to say, I don't know why, but then I realized that, you know, 99% of Congress is just 90-year-old people uh, who are stuck in uh, our old ways. So for some weird reason, we just don't want to progress. We don't want to get better. We'd rather just uh, either take steps back, like the Roe v. Wade situation, we'll either take steps back or just not move at all. I don't know why we want to do that, but apparently that's what we're doing. 
is on the street. Not to mention the amount of pedestrian space you find, which provide attractive public spaces for teenagers to hang out. All of these things are completely possible to build in North America, but we just don't. Laws like we'd rather use our taxpayer dollars on war. Whee! Zoning codes or parking or screw education and public transportation requirements make it illegal to build anything other than car dependent suburbs. We also continue to throw money at expensive road infrastructure, leaving almost nothing for pedestrian or transit projects. Car culture is so prevalent that many people simply believe that anything other than cars are inherently worse. Cause yeah, when you spend ludicrous amounts of money subsidizing highways and suburbs, of course driving is gonna be the only option. What? So even when bike lanes or public transit projects are proposed, you get tons of excuses from NIMBYs about all the traffic you'll cause or yep. where am I gonna park my car? These people really like to blame the problems that cars create on other modes of transportation. Is your city running out of money and on the verge of bankruptcy? Clearly it's because- Yo! Blood Dragon, thank you so much for the 10 gifted subs! Wow! Wow! Thank you so much. Because of all those bike lanes, uh, don't, don't look at all those billions of dollars that we're about to spend on the highway, th th that's not it. Most of these are policy issues, policies made by groups of old people sitting in a government building which are then followed by some other old people who call themselves planners and engineers. Yep. So to actually make changes and improve our cities, we need more civic engagement. Currently, most people who vote in attend city council in meetings are at least need. 50 years old. The direction our cities are going in is being determined by a bunch of boomers. Dude, he said exactly what I was saying! He's spitting facts! <laughs> Cycling is an important mode of transportation. You know, it helps us reduce greenhouse gas emissions. It improves our health. But I think Gen Z and even sometimes millennials are underrepresented in this issue. I truly believe that younger people want more walkable cities and we have the power to make it a reality. This is partly why I started making these videos in the first place. Our city- Yo! $18 Roonies? $18 Rudy's? Was there a message? Did the Texas speech not go off? These have a huge Thank impact you. on younger people, you, and we deserve to have a say on how they're built, even if you're not a professional planner or don't know what exclusionary zoning I'll check means. For message, it's actually. time to stop making excuses for our bad urban design and ask ourselves, do we want our cities to prioritize moving as much cars as possible, or do we want to actually prioritize people? Dude, you know, I, that's what I'm saying. I seeing uh i mean that's why i like my town actually i like it because there is you know a lot of bikes like biking is actually a big deal in my town but dude just having like electric bikes and bikes in general is such a huge thing not just for uh like you know the country but for the environment for people and for everything else public transportation like I mean, that's that's an, another reason why I love living in a smaller town because man, living in a city, pfft, that shit annoying as fuck. Traffic, there is actually the the one big town that's right next to me that has like all the shit. That dude going there around five o'clock, traffic is ridiculous. Traffic is fucking crazy. This is such a big point of discussion in my city right now, dude. It, it's kind of silly because. My town, uh, a lot of shit I don't like. Like, I feel like they kind of screw over small businesses because this one big company, like, owns all of, like, the business buildings. And so they're just waiting for, like, a big business to come in and not really helping out small businesses. Um, but uh, one thing that they're doing good is uh, this kind of stuff. Like, the uh, not public transportation, but, like, making bike lanes um cleaning up their downtown a little bit uh they actually just fixed up a buttload of the roads and they made like these enormous sidewalks and stuff that's one thing i really appreciate about this town is they're doing that type of shit but you know i definitely feel like they're missing huge opportunities with small businesses around here because the downtown is pretty cute but you want to know what they have in a small town in the in the downtown area a bar gambling gambling a salon, uh, uh, a, a bar, again, gambling, gambling, 
a broken down building. That's all downtown is. It's really sad. <laughs> I don't know why towns like love gambling around here, but holy shit. It's fucking annoying. Now it's time to walk away. I hope you enjoyed your stay. Did you laugh or cry or maybe subscribe? I'll thank you either way. You know I will miss you. I hope you return. Tell your friend or your mother to get me more views, please.